Can birds learn to recognize calls while still in their eggs? New fossil species discovered from Rajasthan and build better proteins to keep yourselves young. I'm Nithi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science offers from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. Let's move on to story number one. Scientists have long wondered how early in development individuals learn to perceive distinct sounds. It's known that human fetuses learn to recognize their mother's voice. For birds such as superb fairy wren Malurus cyaneus that perfect their songs with parental tutoring. It was thought that sound perception began well after hatching. But studies carried out by behavioral ecologist Diane Colemberly Negrel of Flinders University showed it otherwise. Diane Colemberly Negrel was wiring superb fairy wren's nests to record the bird sounds when she noticed something odd. Mother fairy wrens sang while incubating their eggs even though it would have made more sense to keep quiet to avoid attracting predators. We used to think a lot of the learning happened after hatching, but now there seems to be more and more evidence suggesting even in the embryonic stage, they are listening. In birds and humans, a drop in embryonic heart rate is known to indicate attention to a stimulus. And to investigate whether this phenomena is widespread among birds, the team led by Diane Colemberly Negrel turned their attention to embryonic heartbeats of captive Japanese quail, plus three more wild species, little penguins, red-winged fairy wrens, and Darwin's small ground finches. The team temporarily removed eggs from nests and measured the heart rates of unhashed chicks before, during and after exposure to playbacks of songs from their own species or others. And to the researcher's surprise, all of the embryos showed not only a slowed heart rate in response to repeated sounds of their own species, but also habituation. The findings suggest that these birds learn to perceive the sounds of their species-specific songs embryonically. Let's move on to story number two. And it's a dream for everyone to keep themselves young. Scientists are looking at microbes to understand how we can keep ourselves young. Microbes that live in hot springs and hydrothermal vents have long fascinated scientists for their ability to survive at temperatures exceeding 100 degrees Celsius. Now these extremophiles may hold a clue to longevity in much more complex creatures including humans. A genetic mutation that keeps the protein making machinery of these tiny organisms from making mistakes can extend lifespan in flies, worms and yeast engineered to have the same DNA change. And researchers have found the discovery suggests errors in protein synthesis and this may be an important driver of aging and a target for future drugs that promote healthier aging. The study carried out by a team of researchers led by Ivana Jedov at University College London looked at glitches in how DNA gets translated which can create faulty proteins. Key to translation is the ribosome, the cellular machinery that uses DNA's instructions to assemble amino acids into proteins. And when the ribosome makes a mistake, the resulting proteins may fold improperly, stick to other proteins and sometimes cause damage to cells. And cells routinely find and dispose of faulty proteins, yet the maintenance process breaks down as we age. So, would fewer translation mistakes increase longevity? Zhedov and her team looked at a part of the ribosome known to be critical for accurate translation of protein called RPS23. While analyzing genetic data from species across the tree of life from cows to gut microbes, the researchers found the same amino acid at a key position in this ribosomal protein. But there was an exception. Certain species of single-celled organism called archaea that thrive in extremely hot and acidic environments had a mutation that replaced this amino acid with another. 
More accurate protein translation might explain the effects of drugs already known to extend lifespan in animals. One of the best studied, the antibiotic rapamycin, reduced translation errors in cells from flies, the researchers found. Hope we will soon have a solution to keep ourselves young. And let's move on to story number three. An exploring extinct species is quite interesting. Jaisalmer, which is a treasure trove of marine fossils, has reported a new fossil specimen. Researchers from the Geological Survey of India and the Indian Institute of Technology, Rurki, have discovered a new extinct species of hybodon shark from the Jaisalmer Basin of Rajasthan. Hyperdons dominated both marine and freshwater environments during the Triassic and the early Jurassic periods. Over 30 teeth specimens collected from the region showed that the species lived about 160 and 168 million years ago. It was named Strophodus jesselmerenesis. And the discovery is significant as this is the first record of Strophodus genus from the Indian subcontinent. It is speculated that hybodont sharks could have grown about 2 to 3 meters long. They became extinct about 65 million years ago, probably due to competition from other fishes including sharks. It is interesting to note, however, that dinosaurs also went extinct 65 million years ago. It is not clear if these two extinctions are related. But the collected specimens are now housed in Paleontology Division of Geological Survey of India, Jaipur. The discovery was made by a team of researchers from the Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee, and the details are published in the journal Historical Biology. With this, this is a wrap. On this edition of Science Time, we'll be back with more interesting stories from the world of science next week. Do watch Science Time every Friday 9pm only on India Science. Namaskar.